Uh, hey, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Dave Foster. I am a realtor with Fontaine Family, the real estate leader. We have offices in Scarborough and Auburn. And today I want to talk a little bit about when you get to the point in your age that you're looking at your home differently than you had maybe 10 or 20 years ago. Things like stairs, doorknobs, heights of uh, items if you may be in a wheelchair or sit down a lot, things like that. So what I've done is I've put together a presentation that talks about the options that people have when they need to look at a different place to live other than the home they may have lived in uh, for the last 10, 20, 30 years. So I'm just gonna move these slides a little bit here. This is just a slide with some pictures of me. I've been doing uh, real estate for about four and a half years and this is not a sales presentation. Uh, it's just an informational. I like to help people out. My dog, the middle picture shows my dog Colton who is a black lab. He was a guide dog that my wife and I trained for guiding eyes for the blind. Um, unfortunately, they found some issues with his eyes uh, and so they bounced him out of that program and they offered him back to us. I got him back and I had him made into a therapy dog and he and I visit Seal Rock Healthcare in Saco every other Thursday. So that's how we kind of give back a little bit. And then I'm also a Rotarian with the Auburn Lewiston Rotary Club and I've uh, been a past president of that club and I like to do a lot of the um, service work in the community. So my goal for this is not to um, try to like sell anything, it's just to tell you what options there are from what I've learned with my experience in the housing industry. Okay, so this first slide I want to show you is very interesting. This slide shows the uh, size of homes relative to the amount of people that lived in those homes from the past. So it starts in 1790. Back in 1790, the average home was 831 square feet. And it had almost six people in it. You can see the last person there has no legs. Um, so it had almost six people living in an 800 square foot home. In 1860, there were a little less, about the same people, but the housing had gone up to about 888 square feet. So a little bit bigger home, a few less people, or a little bit less uh, number of people living in the homes on average. In 1950, or 1910, sorry, it's hard to read these slides, there were four and a half people living in a home, but the homes had now gone up to 945 square feet. So homes were getting bigger, the number of people living in the homes was going down. In 1970, there were three, a little more than three people, just three people plus the top of the head of that one on the bottom right in a 1,500 square foot home. So now we've got a really pretty large home with only three people living in it on average. And in 2019, which is what that number says, the average home was almost 2,500 square feet and there are two and a half people living in it. So we've got people <clears throat> looking for homes and we've got people that are aging out of their homes and we're trying to figure out a way to um, you know, make it so that everybody can be happy in, in a win-win situation. So, just want to read this one recent national poll from the University of Michigan's Institute for Healthcare Policy and Innovation, sponsored by AARP, found that 88% of Americans ages 50 to 80 wanted to live in their homes as long as possible, but only 15% had given a lot of consideration to the home modifications needed to do so. So people want to stay in their homes, but they don't understand what modifications they might need to live there safely. So the next slide I have is the universal design features for aging in place. So here's a list of some of the features that people would use to modify their home so they could stay in their homes longer. So we've got at least one step free entrance, so an entrance that's easy to get into. Very hard in Maine to find those because we've got a lot of snow. So we typically have one, at least one, usually two steps to get into a home just to get us above the snow line so that we don't get water coming in. Uh, bedroom, full bath and kitchen on the same level and this is what people face a lot with these uh, old capes in uh, Maine where they have one, two th or two or three bedrooms upstairs and a kitchen, living room, dining room downstairs but no bedroom downstairs. So they have to get up and down the stairs to be able to uh, go to bed and that's when people start to really feel their age is when they have to go up or go down the stairs. Uh, wide doorways and hallways. We need wider doorways and hallways. Obviously, if you're in a wheelchair, walkers, that kind of thing, we need more access width-wise. Lever doors and faucet handles. So instead of having a knob, we have a lever. They're easier to push up and down relative to our hands getting a little harder to move than the doorknobs are to spin. 
multi-height kitchen countertops. So we have, you know, if we're seated, we can use the kitchen countertops. If we're standing, we can use the kitchen countertops. So there might be two levels of kitchen countertops. I actually saw today online a pull-out thing. It just pulled straight out and then it clicked down and the person could stand on it and get up into their cabinets. And then they just picked it back up, slid it back into the cabinets where you couldn't see it. It's a very cool design to be able to make it easier for people to be able to get it into the higher cabinets. Bathtub or shower with non-slip bottom, obviously. Blocking in the bathroom walls so grab bars can be added. So some of our bathrooms have showers that are, there's nothing behind them, it's just plastic. So it's hard to put a mounting handle on there to grab and get in and out of the shower. Sometimes we have to drill bigger holes and put mounting in behind there. That's a modification that happens quite often. Well-lit hallways and stairways, we don't even think about that, right? The light's always been the way it's always been. Next thing you know, we can't see anything because where our eyes are a little less able to see in the light or the lights get a little dimmer. Secure handrails on both sides of stairways rather than just one side or no sides and easy opening windows. So those are some of the modifications that people will do to their home to stay in the home longer. So now I'm just, then I made a list of post um, home ownership housing options. A lot of these you're gonna know, maybe all of them you know, but a couple of them you probably never heard of. I, I saved them for the last. I always save the best for the last. So let's go through these. I'll just go through them quickly. Age-related communities, by law, at least 80% of the homes in these communities must include one resident age 55 or older. So you've heard of those, the uh, condominium complexes that are 55 plus, and that um, allows people to get in there. They're made for people who might be older as far as being able to walk. Some of the services for pools, uh, community service buildings will be retrofitted so it's easy for older people to access and use them. Senior apartments, these rental units are typically restricted to people 55 and older, and most times will come with an elevator. Group homes, um, not to be confused with house sharing, uh, but group homes are a form of assisted living with some care, and residents have a shared or private room in the state licensed home. So these are more like what we would call nursing homes. The house sharing, that would be like if you have a group of friends and you decide well, we'll all go in, we'll sell our homes, and in on one apartment together that fits all of our needs. A lot of people think of the Golden Girls. Very funny show. So a lot of people do that. Nesterly, I think I had that later, so let's skip that for now. The village model, not to be confused with the village people, the village model uh, lets people remain in their own homes longer by creating their own support network. So maybe you have a group of neighbors in your neighborhood that want to share services like plowing, lawn mowing, even bringing food in, now you can get food delivered from Hanford or, or Shaw's. That way they can stay in their homes longer, but, but not risk their health by having to do things that they're not quite able to do anymore. Um, assisted living, you go in there and you have people helping you out with medication, maybe getting up, uh, maybe getting baths, things like that having meals done and, and things. Memory care, this obviously is for when, if we run into things like Alzheimer's or d uh, dementia where we need to have more care, maybe even a locked area. So my dog and I, when we go to Seal Rock, we actually visit what's called secure. And that area, I have to punch a code to get in so that we, because they don't want those residents walking away. And that, I gotta tell you, of my whole week, that is my favorite time of the week because it's very calm, typically. Um, I really like it there. I get to go in, I get to see my, my people. Continued care re, uh, retirement communities, the advantage of these communities is continuum of care. So Seal Rock, and again, this is not a sales job for Seal Rock, but I've been visiting there since 2011, so I know quite a bit about it. Seal Rock Healthcare is part of Atlantic Heights down in Saco. They've got a bunch of um, what they call cottages surrounding these buildings. Then they've got a four-story apartment building. Um, and they have uh, memory care also in that building. So what they've got is people move into these cottages and when they uh, age out of the, even the cottage, they move into the apartment where there's more care. And then when they need even more care than that, they age from the apartment into the, what we call nursing area. And then we have accessory dwelling units. That's this bottom one here. That's the one that is sort of got the big buzz now. You may or may not have heard of ADUs or accessory dwelling units. But the state of Maine uh, passed a law that made it easier for 
home owners and owners of land to get more density on their land. And what that means is they can build more buildings on that land. Now, an accessory dwelling unit should be thought of something like a granny flat or a mother-in-law apartment. So in the old days, you know, we would have a garage and we would retrofit that garage to set up mom so she could stay with us. We could keep an eye on her. Just a frost wall because we're in Maine and they hook up to the existing well, septic, and electrical of that home, and they become part of that property. They're not a separate home, they're not considered a separate home with a separate deed, and they're not saleable as a separate home. That's one of the downsides of an ADU. So if people get them in there, their mom lives in there, the kids move into the bigger house with the grandchildren, everybody gets to stay together and they all have a great time. When mom passes away, now they've got an empty home, they might think about selling it, but they can't because it's part of that whole property. So if they were to sell, they'd have to sell the whole property. The good thing is, in most cases, towns will let them rent those properties. Most towns are doing um, 28 days or more. So <clears throat> they don't want to have people putting ADUs in and having them used as Airbnbs for two nights or three nights or one night or a week. So they have a limit of, you know, you have to rent it for at least 28 days or a month. And, but that can be really good because there are things like travel nurses that need six month uh, contracts to be able to move in or three month contracts. So people can do that rental, make a little bit of income off of that ADU. In most cases, you'd have to check with your town for their laws. But this right here um, is a company called Nesterly. I believe they're out of Massachusetts. I don't know a lot about this, but I know enough um, about it to tell you that what they do is they take application from people who are older. One or two people might live in a home. A lot of times I believe it's a single person. So one of the spouses may have passed away. There's one left in the home, but the home is, you know, the, the lawn, the, the driveway may get plowed, but then they've got sidewalks that need to be sh uh, shoveled and some salt put down and you know made safe for walking and what this company does is it vets younger people who need a place to live they make sure they have a, a good job they've got references they do a background check to make sure that they're safety wise a good risk and they put them into these homes with these older people they pay rent so the older people have some, have some income from this and they get some help in um, the chores around the home that's a brand new thing that's sort of happening and uh, you'll probably see more about that. But again, the ADUs and Nesterly, those two things are sort of the newer type model. And it's not like it hasn't happened in the past. All of this has happened in the past. It's just that it's becoming more systemized to help alleviate the problem with younger people looking for places to stay, older people wanting to stay in their homes. The two together might be a great combination for you. Um, so I just wanted to talk about downsizing options. The average cost of assisted living in Maine is $6,222 a month. The average cost of rent in a 55 plus community is $2,800 a month. And the cost of an ADU fully financed with an 8% interest rate is $1,985 a month. So that, said, that, that basically says if you put an ADU in, it might be a little bit less than if you tried to go live in a condo or assisted living if it worked for you, if it made sense for you and your family, you would be in a situation where maybe the family moves into your home, you move into a really nice new little ranch, and um, everything's easy to access, and the family's there to keep an eye on, on you, and again, you keep an eye on them. It's probably more like it. Um, a lot of the ADUs are being built in Maine, down in the po uh, Portland region, uh, Cape Cod, Western Mass. There's a company called Backyard ADUs, and full disclosure, my son-in-law is one of the principals of that company, and that's the reason I kind of did this presentation was because after talking with him over the past couple of years, I've learned about what it is ADUs are and what the value might be to the um, older cohort in our state. Oh, Scarborough has had an excellent accessory dwelling unit rule since 2002. They allow all types of ADUs by right, this means homeowners can build a second small home on their property without applying for a special permit, which saves time, aggravation, and money. However, there are some restrictions here. So they talk about the size of the unit in this case, about the size of the living unit. If it's under 2,000 square feet, the ADU can be up to 750 square feet. And a lot of the ADUs are about that, that size. If it's 2,000 to 3,000, it can be 750 square feet or 35% of the home. 
so bigger. And you can see that as the home gets bigger, the ADU possibility gets a little bigger also. I don't have that on the slide here, but I did read on site, and you'd want to check this out, that there are restrictions on the number of days that you can rent an ADU out. So you'd want to check with the city on that. Um, and why now demographics? So right now we've got a big bump, as you can see, in the, the children and the parents. So the children ages 25 to 35, and the parents ages 56 to 70. That's where the big bumps are. So we've got this cohort of kids. Many of them can't afford a home. We've got a cohort of older people, many of them in a home, a lot of them with major um, equity because the market's gone up so much in the past five years. And that's how they can build these ADUs on is by taking home equity and spending the money on the ADU. And then everybody can live in that area in nice housing and also be together. So if you like your family, it's a great option. So now upzoning talks about having land. You can put a certain number. I think it's uh, up to four dwelling units on a, on a pretty small lot. And bonus density for micro units. Some of the towns and cities are doing bonus density because they really want to get that housing in there. So they're offering incentives to do that. Also, the um, backyard ADUs, uh, which is uh, the company that I'm most familiar with, they will do a site evaluation for you. It costs a little bit of money to come in, but they'll actually go come in and look at the site and assess what it would cost you to put an ADU on the site. They also have just started the ability for you to go to your town on a link and see if your town is an ADU, you know, what, what kind of ADU compliance they have in that town. Um, I believe Westbrook and one other town is set up. And maybe it might be Scarborough. Um, I can get those links. You can reach out to me. My contact information is at the end of this. Um, but they'll be rolling out more and more of those towns. So it'll be easy for a homeowner to go on to the site, put in their address, and see if it's compl uh, compliant and compatible with an ADU. And these are a couple examples. If you look at the picture, this is an ADU for a grandmother. Um, this is one here. You can see the white house here on the side. And then the ADU there. This one's attached by a little walkway, the white door right there is the attachment. Um, I actually was bringing coffee over to these guys. This was right off of Con um, Congress Street in Portland about, I don't know, I guess it was the end of last year. And they had just taken the crane out. They were getting the crane out of here after craning this, this building in there. They're all pre-made. Um, pretty amazing. And it was a pretty tight squeeze to get the building in there. That's a second unit, but it's part of the same house. This is a garage conversion, so you can see that it's a garage and they've converted it so it's a small unit for somebody like a, the old granny flat. That would be pretty much the same as that. And they do it on a frost protected wall like they say here. They don't want shifting and all that stuff. They want it to be nice and tight. And these are also built to code new codes, so six inch walls and things like that, insulation. So they're very, very efficient. Uh, the, I forget the number, I think it's $1,200 a year total for elect electrical, including the, the uh, heat pumps um, in most of these units. So imagine that, your electric and your heat bill together is $1,200 for the year. They're just super, super efficient. And they also have options for um, solar, depending on where you live. The downsides of ADUs is that um, you, you have to become a joint tenant on the deed. So it's not like you're, you don't have to become a joint tenant, but most people do. Um, so you have to talk a little bit about deeds with a lawyer or a realtor or something like that. Um, because they're not, again, a separate building on a separate lot. They can't be sold as a separate building. They're going to be sold as the same um, property. Uh, if the family member outgrows the main house, moving may become more difficult because the family member, in addition to the person in the ADU, has to move. Make sense? So... If I'm living there and somebody in my family is living in the ADU and I just I get a job change to Michigan and I have to move, they either have to buy the house or keep paying the mortgage or move or whatever. It becomes a different conversation. Almost like think of it like a multi-unit. If you owned a multi-unit and you had your family member living in the second unit, if you were going to sell the multi-unit, they'd either become a tenant or... You know, and it would be up to the new owner to let them do that. So it does add a little bit of a layer to that. And the bottom line is ADUs are permanently tied to the house. They are not separate for, separated for purposes of resale.
And that leads us into financing. A lot of people ask about that. Well, how do I pay for an ADU? So the mortgage companies don't really have a good vehicle yet for paying for ADUs because the issue is runs with the appraisal. So they want to mortgage the ADU. The appraiser comes in and they're like, well, we've got two houses here. I don't know how to appraise this. There's not a lot of comps out there for them to look at. So they're having trouble figuring out what the value of the property is so the bank will lend the money, although that's becoming easier because more of it's happening. Um, they also will do like a home equity line. So like I said earlier, many people have equity in their homes they didn't have five years ago. So five years ago, my home was worth X. Now it's worth 35% to 40% more, and I haven't done anything to it. It's just the market's gone up. So all of there's a lot of equity in these um, older folks' homes that they can use to buy the the um, ADU, and then the person in the ADU typically will pay that mortgage payment, and they're paying it for the whole property. So it works out the value is still there for the for each person, and the interest rate can be higher for that kind of purchase. So it might be considered a construction loan, which may be a twenty or twenty five percent. Well, the interest rate could be nine or ten percent. The down payment could be twenty or twenty five percent if it's mortgaged. So you know you have to keep in mind all of that. And the terms are typically 20 years, which is lo longer, shorter than 30 years. So your payments are truncated and therefore they may be long, uh, larger per month, which can be tough for some people. On the last screen, there are some uh, places to look. I've got the links there. They're kind of long and they're not obviously on video going to be able to be clicked on these links. But if you want to type them in, you can do that on a, on a browser and go to these links or just Google these names like Google Maine.gov housing or Scarborough ADU rules. Just Google that and it'll pop right up and you'll be able to go there. I put nesterly.com on there for that one that I was talking about and also Backyard ADUs, which is uh, the company that um, is in Maine and Cape Cod and they're the ones doing a lot of the um, ADUs in the state. So if you want more information, you can go there or if you want to get them to come over and look at your site to do a site evaluation, you can go there also and they'll do that. My information's at the bottom, uh, including my phone number and my email address. So please reach out to me. If you need direction somewhere, I'd be glad to do that for you. So with that said, I hope that was helpful. And um, if you do have any questions, like I said, reach out to me or the people listed here. And uh, I appreciate it. I hope you all have a great day.